I'm coming through when the growth look good on you. Best believe they wanna screw now. I've been trying to climb, devil threw me in the dark. Baby, don't be insecure, you can still go make a mark like. Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now. Blow. Table turning like doorknobs, wow. Blow. I think I'm about to set sail. I'm a walking, living legend, walking with my chest yeah. out. Life keeps dealing me cards. What's going on, my people? What is going on? It's G, and we are back in the damn building. We're here. Match preview, Chelsea versus Liverpool. As you guys can obviously see in the background, it's the Carabao Cup final this weekend. It's a big one. It's a big one. And when I say a big one, it's not big in terms of the trophy. Now we already know it's still the EFL Cup, and you know that's the that's the little man thing. You know what I mean? It's not it's not it's not the biggest of trophies, win or lose it. It's not really that big of a deal. But for the bragging rights and things like that, it is vitally important that we walk away with the trophy at the end of the day. So I said, let's just do a big big preview for it. So guys, before I get into it, before we take a look at the match, before we talk about you know everything. Make sure you're smashing that like button. Make sure you've obviously subscribed to the damn channel. If you guys haven't watched already, I did a video earlier on this week talking about the Liverpool Academy. So, guys, make sure you check that out. We probably will see a couple of those Academy graduates, you know, the Connor Bradleys, you know, the Jarrell Kwanzas of this world. We're probably going to see them this weekend as well. So, guys, please make sure you do smash that like button and make sure you check out that video. Smash the like on that video with both myself ends and jerry so please 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 make sure you check that video out it's a really really informative video and we had a little talk in regards to the academy you know the setup and you know all of these other like you know kind of various different things so yes please make sure you guys check it out but of course we are here to talk about the chelsea liverpool game now obviously we faced off against chelsea twice this season both home and away Beat them 4-1 at our place, drew 1-1 one, one at their place, you know. So, you know, we're, in terms of aggregate school line, we're doing good this season. In terms of the aggregate school line, we are doing good. Now, when we did face Chelsea at the beginning of the season, that was obviously, you know, first game of the season, Liverpool's new midfield, Chelsea's new midfield, you know, new manager from Chelsea, the bounce playing at Stamford Bridge and, you know, all of these other various different things. The, Liverpool did it, in my opinion, didn't really put in a good performance, you know, and we we lost the, we lost key battles, you know, in my personal opinion. But, you know, as the caveat, as everyone keeps saying is, it's a new team, it's a new midfield, we've just, you know, transition season and all of these other various different things. Things that we say at the beginning of seasons when we don't actually know what's, you know, what's actually going to go on. And then obviously, of course, as the season continues, you, you know, it's, oh, well, well, now we're top of the league and, you know, we deserve to be here and all of these, you know, all of these other various different things so the landscapes obviously changed by the time we faced them of course at Anfield we've then beaten them as you guys can see on the bottom we beat them 4-1 um emphatic victory um from us uh play Chelsea off the park if I'm being totally honest with you so yeah it, it was one of those kind of things it was one of those kind of games so looking towards the and you know the cup final I always say cup finals are always different. That's that's the one thing. Cup finals are not necessarily, not to say that they can't, but more often than not, what we see from cup finals is that they're not going to be like the league fixtures that you've had in the season or games that you potentially have had in the season. Cup games are usually different and especially finals. Teams, obviously, nobody wants to lose. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this game is going to like... Uh, extra time and then penalties or it's going straight to penalties i actually don't really know so it'll be interesting to find out please in the comments if you could actually let me know because i still don't know but um it's just going to be interesting now i'm doing this video um on the 22nd of february and um, so it's only thursday I'm gonna post this out obviously on the friday itself so in terms of news and everything like that, things could potentially change. Of course, you guys are going to see my lineup and the lineup that, you know, I'm looking to go with. So it might change. It might differ, you know, different caveats and stuff. So I'm only going based off of everything that I know and I've heard of, you know, from this point up to the 22nd of February. Just want to reiterate that and let that be known just in case I pick, I don't know, Endo, we find out Endo, Endo's injured for the next six months. You know what I mean? Touch wood, you know. So, yeah, it, it, just so that you guys kind of know that. But 
again, coming up against Chelsea, I think it's going to be an interesting one, as I mentioned about, you know, playing in a cup final. I don't think, you know, looking at Chelsea's last, like, few fixtures and stuff like that, um, if you take a look here, you know, drew 1-1 against Manchester City, which actually, you know, helped us out a lot, you know, in the... Um, um, in the title race. So thank you, Chelsea, uh, for that one. Uh, they beat Crystal Palace 3-1 prior to that. Uh, beat Aston Villa 3-1. Uh, they lost 4-2 against um, Wolverhampton Wanderers, which is quite interesting. And then, of course, they lost 4-1 to Liverpool. Here you look at Liverpool's last few games, as you guys can obviously see. Beat Luton um, just recently 4-1. Brentford 4-1. Burnley 3-1. Lost 3-1 to Arsenal. Um, big, big defeat there. Uh, and then, of course, beat Chelsea for one so obviously for Liverpool it's only one defeat in their last what's that one two three last uh, last five games so yeah that's not really too much of a problem you know three games on the bounce that we've won so you know we're coming into it form we're scoring quite a few goals Chelsea you know in their last five games they've lost two one two drawn one so it's like a mixed bag with them and I think that's exactly what it's been like for Chelsea this season when I think about Chelsea as a whole, you know, if I even look to, you know, their their kind of league position this season, and when we take a look at Chelsea in a general sense, in fact, you know what, I'll actually share my screen so you guys can, you guys can see it for yourselves. Yeah, that perfect. So obviously we can see here, of course, the big boys, the bad boys are on top of the league. And then, you know, we can see here Chelsea are all the way down. I have to scroll a little bit. I have to scroll a little bit. Chelsea are all the way down in 10th position. Now, won 10 games, lost 10 games, drawn five games. Like, that's the kind of, this is what I say about Chelsea. It's so, we just saw in their last five games, won two, um, lost two, drawn one. That, that has been Chelsea all season. They're, what they are is they are consistently inconsistent. That's what I will say, you know, in regards to Chelsea. Can they hurt you on their day? As they showed against Manchester City, as they showed against Liverpool the first game of the season, as they showed against Arsenal uh, when they drew there. Yes, they can hurt you in that kind of sense. They can do it. You know, they're, they're, I can't sit here and say they're a poor team and, you know, red tear tear. No, I don't think it's even just as black and white as that. I do think on... I don't want to say on their day, so to speak, but I will say when Chelsea want to play, then they will play kind of thing. I think that's how I kind of look at Chelsea. You know, it's when they when they really want to turn up, when they really want to do whatever it is they need to do, that's that they'll be the most annoying Chelsea that you know. Now we know in terms of finals, we faced Chelsea in back in 2022, faced them both in the League Cup and the FA Cup. Of course, Liverpool coming out victorious in both competitions, but of course in their Carabao Cup, we beat them on penalties. And they, again, of course, in the FA Cup. And even when I think about it, you know, Kepa missing there, you know, absolutely crazy. You know, that, that was funny. It was, uh, listen, that was actually hilarious. But when I think about it, even thinking to, back to back to that game, it's, it, you know, it's Chelsea made life difficult. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And obviously they were a better team than they are, um, of course, this season. Kind of thing, you know. I think, yeah, they, they still had Lukaku and everything like that. I think Lukaku's first season back with Chelsea, but they made life difficult. And even though, yes, Liverpool were on a high, we we're going for the four trophies, you know, we we're doing well in the Premier League, Champions League, and all these other various different things. Chelsea still were just Chelsea. It's just like once they get to a final and things like that, they're just almost a different animal, so to speak. And Chelsea, the football club, in terms of their heritage, they're used in this 20th century, you know, since Roman Abramovich obviously came in, they're used to getting to finals. They're used to the big moments. They understand the pressure. Now, of course, times have changed and, you know, they've got a different team, a different outlook and stuff like that. Who's to say that, you know, any of that heritage is realistically going to matter? But it's something to, to at least take a look at. It's not to be sniffed at, you know, so to speak. Of course, listen, look, I would love if Liverpool go there, we win. 6-1 or 6-0 or whatever the case may be, we absolutely slap them, then, you know, that would that would be, of course, it would be amazing. But to sit here and say that that's going to be something I see happening, no, I don't necessarily think so. But, you know, who knows? It's a cup final. Anything could potentially happen. When we are looking at Chelsea in terms of who I feel, in terms of danger men and things like that, there was two players I looked at. Now, obviously, you've got the Sterlings, you've got the Cole Palmers, you've got the Nkunkus, you've got the Jacksons, you know, play Mudricks and stuff like that. And they are all threats. They they can be all threats. But when I'm looking at this type of game in terms of what 
type of game you will that you're trying to potentially have over a Liverpool. You know what Liverpool are like. Are like. You know we're a counter-attacking team. We're very direct. We wanna, you know, we wanna fast break. You know, we wanna try and win possession back quickly to get the ball forward quickly. These are all the kind of things that we want to be able to do. So in order for you to potentially nullify that and something like not. Not to a massive degree, but when you see against other teams, like we faced against Arsenal, you know, when they had Jorginho, Declan Rice in there, they were able to do this really, really well. And that's when I looked at it and thought, hmm, OK, that might be something to potentially look at. Hence why I went with, you know, first the first point of call I went with is obviously Enzo Fernandez. Now, <clears throat> a lot of talk about Enzo Fernandez. A lot of people have spoken about him, whether they think he's good, whether they think he's poor, whether they think he's, you know... Um, worth the money that Chelsea um, paid for him, which was, what, what was it the release called? Like over a hundred um, hundred and something million. So I, I can understand, you know, the the hesitation from some people in a, in a sense of where they actually rank him and or how they actually rate him as a footballer. But then also I can understand from a Chelsea perspective, especially in recent weeks where I've watched him and seen him play, where you're like, nah, you know, I mean, he is a really, really good player. You know, he is someone who, yes, took a bit of time to to kind of, you know, find his feet, so to speak. But he's kind of, you can see now he's growing into that role. You know, he's understanding whatever it is that Pochettino is asking him to do. He's seem, seemingly understanding that, you know, pretty well. And as of recently, you know, getting himself in amongst the goals and stuff like that, you know, being a bit more imposing, you know, playing those final third passes, you know, being able to dictate play. That was always something I always said about Enzo was being able to dictate play, you know, can he dictate play well enough, you know, for a top team? And I feel like if they can do that, then it will help Chelsea in, to, to do whatever it is that they're trying to do, but it will potentially start with someone like him. And I think playing, you know, alongside the Gallagher's, the Caicedo's, you know, in the middle of the park and being given the role that he's been given, which almost seems, and again, I'm not a Chelsea fan. I, I'm just going to go on based on everything I've seen. Don't want to say he's been given a free role, but he's been given more of a license to be able to do these things. Whereas I felt like at the beginning of the season, he was almost hindered a little bit. He was almost, it was almost like, eh, we need you to do this work, actually. And can you still be able to do the other the other side of things? Whereas now, I don't feel like he has, not say so he has no, no defensive responsibilities, but just now I'm looking at him and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can see you, you're being trusted a bit more to be able to dictate play from wherever you are kind of on the pitch. But of course, you do understand that you still have those midfield du duties that you need to obviously comply with. So yeah, he's one player I look at. Again, this is in and amongst the Cole Palmers, as I said, the Sterlings, the Mudricks, the Nkunkus, the Jacksons, you know, in and amongst those kind of players, he's one of those players that I'm looking at. And the other one, and people might laugh, is actually this guy here. He's actually a player that Conor Gallagher, um, he's a player that I looked at, you know, last season or in the summer, should I say, sorry. And I said, you know what? If you if Liverpool signed him, I wouldn't be too mad. If you're just looking for a guy to do the whole running around stuff and basically what Zabozalai does, I, I can't see why he couldn't have done the exact same job that Zabozalai does. Like I, I can't see when I say the difference, obviously Zabozalai is a better footballer in a general sense in terms of what he can do on the ball. But if we're just talking about the defensive side of things and obviously what Klopp asks from his midfielders, I can't see why Gallagher couldn't do the exact same thing. And to be honest, defensively, he might even be a little bit better. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, in terms of how we potentially want to press. But again, I'm not saying swap. I'm not saying I think Zobozalai, um, I think Connor, Connor Gallagher is better than Zobozalai. No, 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 no. Listen to what I'm saying. I just don't think that there's much difference in what we ask Zobozalai to do and what Connor Gallagher can actually do. I think that that role was almost made for him. Hence why I thought we would have potentially have gone in for someone like him, but maybe... <clears throat> maybe fee wise and you know stuff like that you know potentially might come into play so yeah look I, I think like having those two Enzo and um Conor Gallagher I think those two will be vitally important for them I know recently I think they've dropped Thiago Silva a lot of Chelsea fans I'm listening to and them they're saying you know we needed to drop him you know because then you know just to help out in terms of the covering side of things we having to cover for him I think Thiago Silva is a really really good player but you know, he is 39 or whatever it is now. So he is getting on and he hasn't got the legs to potentially be able to be this vital to your team. So maybe 
you know, the De Sassis, the Cole Wills and people of that kind of ilk. I mean, Gusto, another really good player. He's, he's another one I could have easily have added to the list. If you're not careful with someone like him on that left-hand side, yeah, he can cause you a problem. And I think that's where I'm looking at Chelsea and Liverpool and I'm thinking... Liverpool have got threats. We know what they are. I think Liverpool's two big threats, Mike, who I think potentially should be back this week, <coughs> is going to be Darwin Nunes and Mohamed Salah. But again, when I'm looking at Chelsea, they have the threats. If you're able to utilise this team well, I feel like Chelsea have got a good enough team to be able to hurt you where whenever they kind of need to. It's just maybe Pochettino, in my opinion, just hasn't really... Maybe he just hasn't really figured it out. Maybe maybe he's figuring it out as we speak, you know, at this current moment in time. I don't really know. But yeah, that's how I kind of looked at in terms of an overall where I see the threat from Chelsea. Again, like I mentioned, the Jacksons, the Mudricks, the, the Cole Palmers, the Sterlings, the Nkunkus and stuff like that, if, if, they are for, if they are fit, they can hurt you in different ways. I just think in that middle of the park, when I'm looking at Enzo and I'm looking at Gallagher, you know, those two players, I think with the roles and jobs that they've been doing recently, if they're able to do that, one being the dictator, one being the presser and having Caicedo who can kind of do a little bit of both kind of thing, not not great, probably obviously better at doing the pressing side, but not that great at dictating, but can still drive the ball forward, you know, can still pick out, you know, a pass and he can also help out defensively. That's where I feel you know, Chelsea could be a potential problem. But again, I still feel like Liverpool should have enough in their arsenal, even though I know we've had, you know, we've got the injuries. The nose of Bozzolai, uh, I mean, well, I say nose of Bozzolai at the time of this, 22nd of February, I'm saying nose of Bozzolai, no Trent. You know, of course, we've got no Tiago, we've got no, no Bajetic, Matip, and, you know, these kind of guys are out. But I still feel like we should have a strong enough team to be able to go into this game and, you know, potentially get that win. So, yeah, that that's just my... That's just my thinking, base level thinking, you know, when I'm when I'm um, going over it in my head. If we take a look here, um, this is my lineup for the final. It's going to be real interesting. I, I guarantee this is all going to change. I guarantee, guarantee. So I put Keller in. Obviously, we know Allison is injured. I'm going to put Van Dyke in. I'm going to put all the ones that I feel like, yeah, they're guaranteed. Uh, Ender, I think, is guaranteed to start if he's fit. Uh, Canate, I think he's guaranteed to start if he's fit. Um, that's it. All right, so left back. What would I go with for the left back position? Obviously, we know Robbo's back in action. Gomez, obviously, played against Luton. Don't think Gomez did well against Luton. I think he had a really poor game. Uh, probably his worst game that he's had in this run of games that he's been playing. Probably his worst game, if not the worst game he's had actually this season, when I think about it, because he's been so good, you know, this season. I would probably go with... Um, need to be careful because does he play Robbo? Do I go Robbo? Do I go Robbo? You know, we'll start off with Robbo. We'll start off with Robbo. Do I, do I want to do go with Robbo though? Yeah. Okay. We'll start off with Robbo. We'll start off with Robbo. Right back then. Right back. I'm going to go with Gomez. But I'm not adverse to starting. I'm not adverse to starting Bradley there. But I'm just thinking one, I have no idea who's going to play on that wing. So it could be a Mudra, it could be a Sterling. Not to say because Bradley had a really good game against Chelsea, uh, probably his best game for Liverpool thus far, um, against Chelsea and against Sterling um, and Ben Chilwell on that side. They didn't really offer offer anything down that side. So it was kind of an easy night, really, for for him and yeah i don't know i just feel like i'm a bit more comfortable with this if i'm being honest for a final uh so yeah i'll go with that Endo, of course in that midfield um curtis jones is obviously not available i don't think uh yeah they were really running thin really running thin if there's no curtis jones well okay we'll go with McAllister first and foremost because then you know that, that's kind of obvious Mm. Will he go with Gravenberg? You know, to be fair, it's my predicted lineup. Forget what he would go with. I would go with. I 
I would go with it's a tricky one, people, man. It's actually a tricky one. It's actually a tricky one. Cause I'm thinking of Elliot, but I don't think Elliot played that like, good like that against thing. But you know, Mo Salah and that will be back. Okay, cool. You know what? So Elliot and Mo I don't really want those two actually that side. McAllister on the left here. McAllister's going to have to do a lot of covering. Mm. Maybe put Elliot. Mm, but then can Elliot really? I mean, I know they can interchange in that. Mm, this is this is harder than you think, man. This is harder than I thought. All right, maybe maybe like this, but maybe it might change. But they would have to because I'm just thinking that he's going to go and do all of this stuff as per usual. So someone's going to need to help out and cover on that side, potentially. I, nah, uh, yeah, McAllister. <coughs> yeah, I'd rather just, yeah, keep McAllister that side. Keep McAllister that side. Um, all right. So I'm just basing it off what I think I would like to see. Um, oh, he's not fit, is he? You know what, actually? Considering changing Darwin Nunes for Gapo, I am considering it. I am considering it. Darwin Nunes or Gapo? Darwin Nunes or Gapo? Um, guys, it's honestly, it's very, very tricky, man. Just trying to think. Darwin Nunes or Gapo? Gap obviously played, but he's kind of a bit. We'll keep it like this for now. Luis Diaz, Nunes, and Salah. I'll keep it like that just for now. So that's the team that I would think to go with. Again, like I said, depending on injuries or barring any injuries, I feel like they, I think that these players should be all right. Again, Darwin Nunes and Mohamed Salah. I don't know what their situation is going to be like by the time that I drop this video. So that could potentially change. Um, and we don't know who else is going to pick up an injury by the time I actually drop the video. Things, the situation could look a little bit different, but that's kind of what I would potentially go with. Um, again, I'm not, I've got no problem with you if people say, no, I'll play Bradley and stuff like that. I've really got not, pro not a problem with that. But if you're asking me, my team, I, I think Gomez is ahead of him in that, in that kind of, um, in that kind of area. Um, at least to start the game anyway, at least to start the game. And then, I don't know if you want to bring him on, then you can bring him on. Or if you want to take Robbo off to put Gomez left back, and then you can bring Bradley on to go to right back. Whatever, however you kind of want to see it, however you kind of want to do it, that's kind of how you know I'm looking at it. But Keller in goal, Robertson left back, Gomez right back, Van Dyke, Canate in the middle, Endo, Elliot, McAllister, Diaz, Nunez, and Salah. Let me know, of course, what you guys think in the comment section, please. Um let me know who you would go with, who maybe, like I said, you might put a Bradley in, Gapo potentially starting if, ahead of Nunes or Salah. Again, like I said, things could look potentially different by the time this comes out. So, yeah, just bear that in mind, people. But in terms of prediction wise, I will go with. Um, I will go with. Two two penalties, and I don't know who on penalties. I don't want to sit on the fence. I'll say if it goes to penalties, I think Chelsea win on penalties. I'll say that much. If it goes to penalties, I think Chelsea will win. If I had to go for like a straight winner just in the ninety minute match, I'll say Liverpool two 0 But I just don't think it's going to happen like that. Um, I don't know, man. I just think Chelsea. I I don't know. Listen, I said that in the last game, and we ended up beating them four one. I'm hoping that the reverse psychology is going to work this time, and that's exactly what's going to happen. But I just, for some reason, I just don't know, man. I don't know. I think if we, if there's going to be a winner in 90 minutes, it's going to be Liverpool. So I'll say 2-0, 2-0 or 2-1 to Liverpool. If there's not going to be a winner in 90 minutes, I think Chelsea will win it on penalty shootouts. That's that's just how I see it at this current moment in time. Let me know what you guys think, of course, in the comment section below. Do you think that Liverpool will triumph this Sunday in the Carabao Cup final? 
Do you think we will lift our first trophy of the season or will Pochettino get his first trophy in English football? It's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be an interesting storyline, no matter which way that you look at it. Jurgen Klopp's second Carabao Cup trophy or Pochettino's first trophy in English football. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, man. It's going to be crazy. But guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please make sure you smash a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'm G, and that is the EFL Carabao Cup final preview done and dusted. I will catch you guys on the other side. Peace!